we have this Easter play in the name of no name in the street and it is the whole play is coordinated by uh, Blessy and David and directed by Dr. Denny Fleming and uh, a team of staff and students and so many people are involved in uh, preparing for this play. Uh, let us thank God for their hard effort they have put and let us pray that this evening will be a blessed one for all of us here. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Loving and gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for bringing us together this evening. We thank you for the way you guided us. We thankfully remember, O oh Lord, for sending your Son Jesus Christ into this world to save us from our sins. Thank you for the suffering that he underwent for our sake. Thank you for the way he rose again from the dead. And he is alive with us even now. As we remember and retell and rehear that story of love, inspire our hearts, O Lord. May we experience your presence and your love in a fresh manner this evening. Bless all those who are going to participate in this play. Bless all those who have come here for this evening time. May your name be glorified. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Hello. Check. 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 <coughs> uh, good evening again to everybody. Uh, one of the main questions we ask, especially in this Lenten season, Good Friday and Easter, is why did the Lord do anything for me, me a sinner? This song is called Why.
since Jesus died. All these years to the day since his case was tried. When the witnesses lied. And friend denied his friend. When the cock light cried. All these years to the day since the temple wail. Was shrieked into ribbons while thunder and hail. Fanged the teeth of a gale. And hammer and nail told the terrible tale. All these years to the day long gone and yet we still remember the ache and the fret of the cross growing wet with his blood and his sweat how could we forget how could anyone forget all these years to the day since my son died i remember it as if it were just yesterday i remember his last week as if it had just gone by and such things happened in that week. My world was upturned. My life was blighted. My happiness broken forever. Listen, and I will tell you, it began one night of storm when I dreamed a dream that my son was in great danger. I woke cold and frightened, knowing that I had to find him and warn him. But where should I make for? Where could I go? All I knew was that Jesus was near to Jerusalem. So that is where I went. As I came near to the city, I found myself among great crowds of people. Some of them had cut branches from the trees, and they waved them as they watched a procession go by. Here they are. That's him on the donkey. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of Israel. Why does he come on a donkey? Some people will do anything to draw attention to themselves. I should have thought he would have at least used a chariot. That's what conquerors always use. Is he a conqueror? The common people seems to think so. The common people will think anything we are told to think. He came up from nothing, you know. A carpenter son from Nazareth, I believe. Well, really, Nazareth, they ask you. What could ever came out of there? Hosanna! Who is it you're cheering? The prophet, of course. Jesus of Nazareth. The prophet from Galilee. Then I have found him. As far as we are concerned, you may have him. We have rather more important things to discuss. Now, as to this little dinner party I was planning. Yes, it is them. I must speak to them. Here, here. Who is it you're shoving? Are you trying to push us out? We've been here since dawn, let me tell you. Look, any more of you, and you feel the back of my hand. Hail to the Prince of Peace! Please let me through. Any more of your shoving and I'll blacken your eye out for you. Good way towards all men! Please. Keep back, won't you? Go and find your own pitch. Everybody, love your neighbor. Hosanna! So they wouldn't let me through. And I couldn't get through to my son. I just had to watch him go by in the procession with the crowd all shouting and cheering and barring my path. Listen to them, won't you? Listen to them as they cheer the man on the donkey and those who are with him. Listen! Listen again! Hosanna! 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 You will hear an echo of that later on. Hosanna! 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 Remember. Hosanna! 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 So the procession went by, and all I could do was to follow behind in the hope that somehow I could get through to my son. Am I a Pharisee? No. A scribe? No. A Roman invader? Three times no. Then who am I? In all honesty, tell me. No, no, don't tell me. I am a self-respecting, law-abiding, single-dealing temple trader. That's who I am. As honest a body as ever set up stall under the shadow of Solomon's porch. And what has happened to me? Go and tell me. No, no, don't tell me. I'll tell you. I was standing behind my stall, just as I always do, minding my own business, getting on good terms with everybody, with a good morning here, and a good fortune there, and don't handle the good little horror, here, there, everywhere, when it suddenly came upon me. Yes, there in the temple I was upturned, upset, toppled over, and otherwise capsized. One moment standing four square to the world, on my own two feet, and the next, not knowing whether I was to my head or my elbow, surrounded by the finest assortment of squash, pomegranates, raisins, and fig cakes that money could buy. And my doves, my lovely little doves, all broken out of the cages and going up and down the heavens like a ladder full of Jacob's angels. 
And it wasn't only the likes of me, you know. Oh no, the money changes came in for it as well. Up went the tables and down went the trays and spontaneous from all over the world was swelling like a river across the courtyard. And who did it? Why this young madman who come among us, that's who did it. I never saw anyone so mad in all my life. And I come across a few cranks in my time, but nothing like this one. I tell you, you wouldn't catch me anywhere near the temple while he is still around. Did you hear he said we were making this look like a robber's cave? Do I look like a robber? A brigand? More like a beggar now that I'm forced to train in the streets like this. Pickaxe lady? Raisins or pomegranates? What about a nice juicy apricot then? No, really, nothing, thank you. Well, you're not much good for trade, and that's a fact. I'm sorry, but I have no money. I've given it all away, all that I had, that is. And though to be truthful, you wouldn't have thought it very much. How much? Just a mite or two, that's all. And that was all you had? Yes. And you gave it all away? Yes. Well, cheer up then. You're not much poorer by it. And whoever you gave it to is much richer either. I gave it to the temple. To the temple? You gave it to the temple? Well, tell me, the madman, is he still around? Which madman? The, the, the Nazarene, of course. Him who turned me off my pitch. Yes, he was there. He saw me put the money in the chest. I was standing in the queue behind some merchants who were giving handfuls of shekels. But when it came to my turn, he pointed me out and said, that I'd given more than any of the others. There. Doesn't that just prove he's mad? And he's still up there, you say? No, he's gone now. To Bethany, I believe. But I heard someone telling a poor woman who was asking for him that he'd be back in town for the Passover. Well, that's the best bit of news I had today. Here you are. Here's a loaf of Passover bread for you. But I have no money. It's okay. It's free. Free? I must be going as mad as he is. I tell you this, he said. This poor woman has given more than any of the others. For they gave only some of what they had. But she has given all that she had to live on. Let this Passover be filled with good things, O Lord. For I who have nothing, and he who saw how rich that nothing is. Have the gentlemen all they require? Yes, mistress. In a food and drink? Mm, bread and wine for 13, mistress. There's something special about this party. Your master was most concerned we do everything for them. He's not even charging them for the use of this room. And he did a very strange thing this afternoon. He told me not to carry any water in the pitcher. He told me he'd do it himself. Who ever heard of a man carrying water? That's woman's work. Well, your master knows best, I suppose. Men always do, or so they tell us. And who are we to dispute them? But I do hope the master knows what he's doing. I mean, we've always had the reputation of being one of the best places, but some of this party, they're not exactly out of the top class, are they? Well, I must agree. I was a little surprised when I saw some of them go the outer stair. They even looked rougher than I thought they would. And there was such an argument going on up there, I tell you, <laughs> about who was to be chief among them. But surely that is Jesus of Nazareth. But it sounded like he was going away somewhere. Well, that'll be good news for some. Excuse me, mistress. Did you call, sir? A basin of water, a towel. Certainly, sir. Right away, sir. Well, what are they up to now? Miss, I don't know, mistress, but I expect we'll soon find out. Well, they can't do much harm with water and towel, can they? In fact, some of them look as if they could do some good with it. I only wish my husband was not mixed up with this outlandish lot. We were getting on quite well, making a nice little profit, working up a nice little business, in fact. It's not going to do us any good being mixed up with such people as this. It's going to damage our reputation, you know. And in the catering line, reputation is everything. 
Well, what are they doing? They're a strange crew and no mistake. Do you know what he's doing now? What? He's washing their feet. Washing their feet? Who is? That Jesus is. But he's supposed to be their leader. I don't know, mistress, but that's what he's doing. I saw him at it. And when he got to that big fellow, there was a bit of a quarrel, but in the end he had to give in. Listen, uh, someone's coming down the stairs. It's one of them. Which one is it? I can't see. He's, he's keeping well with the shadows, whoever he is. But we know one thing about him, mistress. What's that? His feet are clean. <laughs> I was not finding it easy to meet up with my son. The procession had gone by. The crowds were so great. I grew so tired I had to give up and come to the city in my own slow time. And when I got there, how was I to know where he was? Just a word here, a hint there. Excuse me. I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth and its followers. I was told they might be here. You are too late. He's gone. Where they are, are they? all gone. Where are they? I must find them. We have to be careful, you understand? Did I harm my own son? They did not tell us where they were going, but we did overhear something. They've gone to the Garden of Gethsemane. Where is that? Why near the Mount of Olives, of course. Surely you've heard of it. No. No. How can I get there? I can show her if you like, mistress. I can go home that way. There you are then. Go with her. Take me quickly, please. Good night, mistress. Good night. Don't be late in the morning. Thank you. Well, I hope that's the last we hear of that lot. Here is a pleasant garden. By day, it's cold. And dressed in the green corduroy of trees. By night, it's sacred. And cloaked with the velvet of midnight. And filled with the silence of stars. This is the place of angels. And they come here, soft as shadows. To fill the air with murmurings. For those with the ears to hear them. We are the angels. We are the messengers of God. We stand here, guardians of this garden. Waiting for God to come. Jesus, it is quiet tonight here in this garden. Only the buzzing of late insects and the drift of the falling dew will you hear when you come. Your robes will brush aside the praying grasses and your knees print the ground like the nests of love when you speak to the Father. Come, Jesus, and pray your last long prayer here where it seems but an ordinary night with ordinary things happening in the unsuspecting town. Man and maid still love under the stars. The coarse tavern jests writh through the tippled night. The shepherd still staves his flocks on the fleecy plain. To them, it is an ordinary night but only you know it is not ordinary. It is a testing time of the world, but the world does not know the test. Jesus comes, and the others with him. All except the one. Yes, all except the one. His time to come is not yet. Jesus leaves the others. He's coming to pray. The others will watch. The others will sleep. All except the one. Yes, all except the one. Jesus prays, listen. Father, he says, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Look at the anguish, the agony, the sweat, the blood, the long storm of prayer, the great silence of supplication. The garden is at peace again. The others sleep. All except the one. Yes, all except the one. This is the place. It is quiet here. They say angels are supposed to come here, but I've never seen any. It's so dark you can hardly see anything. But see, I can see some men sleeping over there. 
And that one seems to be praying. And look, torchlight, why it's, it's soldiers, and what are they doing here? And there's my son, I'm sure it is. What's happening? It's Jesus of Nazareth, and look, look, they're taking him away. What's happening? What's the matter? Come! Here is a pleasant garden. By day, it's cool. And dressed in the green corduroy of trees. By night, it is secret and filled with the silence of stars. At the high priest's house, old Caiaphas, old frosty face, old puff and blow, old spit and beard. I've got all sorts of names for him. I could go on all night if you wanted me to. But he's not a bad old lad, really, I suppose. After all, you expect the high priest to be a bit stuck up, don't you? You've got to have a bit of the old la dida when you get up in the world. Besides, in the long run, it does me a bit of good too. All the others are envious of me, personal kitchen woman to the high priest. Well. What do you think about things, eh? I suppose you've heard the news. They've brought in the Nazarene. Got him last night up in Gethsemane. One of his friends sold him out, I believe. Got the usual cut of 30 pieces of silver, I suppose. Funny, really, because this lot wasn't supposed to worry over much about money. But it just goes to show, in the end, money always talks. Well, here it's a bit of a cold one tonight. A good job, they told me, to get the fire going. We'd be frozen stiff without it. Do you see the Nazarene over there? Not much of a world beater about him, is there? Not when you see him stripped off like that. Come. Come closer to the fire if you're cold. Yes, that means you as well, big fellow. Here, here. Haven't I seen you before? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. You were with the Nazarene. Surely, yes, you were. What's that? You're not denying it, are you? Well, you may be right, but I could have sworn. That one? What's he doing here? He was with the man Jesus. I'm sure he was. Well now, haven't I just been saying the same thing? All right, all right. Look at him. There's no need for all that swearing. If you don't know him, we'll take your word for that. I don't know if I believe him. Hark at the way he speaks. Come on now, let's have a straight answer to a straight question. Do you or don't you know this man, Jesus? Well, that's plain enough. All right, you don't know him. We believe you. You needn't slink off like that, you know. We're sorry and all that, but you can't be too careful, can you? Look at him, he's crying. A big fellow like that. Just because we caught on to him a bit? He's not the only one. Look at the Nazarene over there. He's shedding a few too. Don't you worry, Nazarene. You haven't got long to wait now. Such things have happened since the last time I saw my son that evil night in the garden. Such terrible things, such trouble, such pain. And now I've come to this temple to seek the prophetess I've been told about. Perhaps she can tell me where my son is. Great prophetess, I've been told to seek you out, to ask comfort from you. What's troubling you, my daughter? I'm looking for my son. You know of Jesus of Nazareth? Who does not know of him? He's an enemy of the people. 
He has been arrested. So it was him they took in the garden. Where is he now? Somewhere between Herod, the high priest, and Pilate, I suppose. What are they doing to him? They are trying him, of course. He will be condemned, he will be crucified. Then we shall see how great he is. In a little while, he will be gone, and his remembrance shall perish from earth. He shall have no name in the street. You will see that he is good. He is a revolutionary, a blasphemer. And there is only one way of dealing with such people. They must be destroyed. Or else, you see, they destroy us. It is as simple as that. There is nothing personal about it. It is just a matter of theological necessity. What of his friends? They scattered themselves very quickly when the hour came. They made sure they were in there when it struck. They went as fast as their legs could carry them. All except one, the one who led us to him. Here's the funny thing. You know the chap who sold out the Nazarene? I saw him in the street, crouching about in the shadows, rolling about as if he had a drop too much, crying his eyes out and carrying his bag of silver still with him. Yeah, what's happening out there? Look, it's him. What's he doing? Hey, look out! What do you think you're doing, Iscariot, throwing your money around like that? Did you say Iscariot? Yes, lady. Judas Iscariot. No, not Judas. No, not Judas, no! Did I say something? It's a fact, all right? He's the one that spilled the beans. Begging your pardon, prophetess. Well, you can always find a use for it, I suppose. There was some talk about the potter's field coming into the market. What I heard was this, that Pilate saw him and sent him back on to Herod. You're out of date. Herod saw him all right and pitched him back to Pilate. After he'd had a bit of fun with him, they say he sent him to Pilate dressed in some gorgeous robe of purple. That's right enough. See for yourself. Poor chap, he looks all in. So would you be if you were being tried before the governor for your life? What does Pilate say? He says, are you the king of the Jews? Answer up, Nazarene. I can't hear him. He says, he says the words are yours. What does Pilate say to that? He finds no fault in him. No fault in him? He wants to let him off with the flogging. Don't let him get away with it, Pilate. He's an enemy of the people. What will Caesar say if you let him go? Kill, kill him, Pilate, Pilate kill, kill him. him. What about the privileges, Pilate? Yes, what about it? Wait, wait. We can have Jesus or Barabbas. Barabbas or Jesus? Then give us Barabbas. Yes, Barabbas. 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 Was it less than a week ago? Do you remember these very same people when the man on the donkey rode past? Do you remember their voices? Raised in the place of the moment as he and his friends went by. Listen again. Listen. Hosanna! 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 But now it has become... Barabbas! 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 Well, you can have your Barabbas if you want him. He's going to release Barabbas! Jesus is to die! Get to the Nazarene! We are one! A victory for common sense! A victory for justice! See you up at the hill. Try and keep me away. Death to all traitors. There is a hill outside the city where in the cool of summer evenings people come and look out over the streets and houses and are proud to belong to such a splendid place. They talk and laugh here. In moments of joy, they feel themselves so near to heaven that they almost reach up and take a handful of early stars from the evening sky. In moments of sadness, they come here, alone, to bury their graves in the tombs of the darkening night. This is a merry meeting place, when the city is alight with holiday, when people are free to tune the airs of the winds with jests, when laughter is carried to the little summer clouds as if plucked from the strings of a thousand harps. It is also a place where people come to see others put to death. It is a place where they set up crosses in the dreary season. It is a place of execution. The place of the dead. The place of the skull. They are coming today, the crowds. 
You can hear them. You can see them. They will come happy to a wedding feast. They will shout the joy. They will be exalted. They will be filled with the excitement of life. For men are to be done to death today in this very and prominent place. They are putting the three of them up together. You crowned them with spiky thorns, soldier. Now drive the nails in hard, soldier. But this, this is, is the king, king of, the, of the, Jews. the Jews. Look, that's what they read up over him. King of the Jews. Now who would have thought my old friend, the madman, would have rose up so high in the world? Did you hear that, my old friend? Well, why not? Look at the goodies brought me today. Brought here the finest crowd since we hung up the caravan droppers. And that must be five years or more on now. And I'm cleaned out, bought out, all goods disposed of, and otherwise sold out. And all thanks to him. And tomorrow, back at the old bridge, stall number 22, under the shadow of Solomon's Forge, you know where to find me. And you wouldn't be turning me over again in a hurry. And that's a fact. No. By the look of things, somebody's been turning you over for a change. And I must say, you don't seem so good on it. Hey, hey, he's thirsty, Centurion. Yes, go on, give him a drink. Go on, give him some water. Here, here, I got something better for him. A skin full of wine for his majesty. A little bit sour, I must say. Return to stock, not good for human consumption, but just good enough for him. Here you are, soldier. Send him a sponge full of this on the end of your spear. After all, one good deed deserves another. It's getting dark. We're, we're in for a storm. Thunder. Darkness. The earth, it trembles. Well may it tremble as it feels the agony of its dark tar. The agony of its greatest spirit. Come to its end in the poor broken body of an outraged man. Listen, he speaks. What's he saying? He says, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. It's all over. Have we done right? Perhaps he was indeed the king of the Jews. Hosanna. Hosanna! Hosanna! We sorrow here at the foot of the cross. We see the poor battered body of Jesus. And we are sorry that we and our kind have caused such pain at the end of a human life. For we ourselves are human. Yes, that is our excuse. We are human. We try to be true to a pattern. There is something that sometimes prevents us. It is the unknown factor. The mysterious equation. The flaw in the casting. That some call human nature. This man was a good man. He forged his pattern and was true to it. So perhaps that is why we destroyed him. For while he lived, he was ever a conscience before us. But now that he is dead, perhaps we can go on as we did before. Yet I have a strange feeling that this is only the beginning. That by his death, that conscience may grow stronger than ever. That we will be more disturbed as time goes on. That the world will be more disturbed as time goes on. I too. I'm broken. Jesus, I kneel at the foot of your cross in sorrow. A mother weeping for her son. Forgive us all our shortcomings, Jesus. So you have found your son at last? No. This is not my son, except insofar as he is every woman's son from this time forth. No. My son was another, a little boy who grew up to be strong and to love his country and who did all he did for pure love of that country. No. I am the mother of Judas the betrayer. All you who draw away, 
Are you not betrayers too? All you who are gathered here, is there not some of Judas in your hearts? And when you count the change in your purses or clink the coins in your pockets, can you be sure that there are not some pieces of tainted silver among them? Pray, pray, pray that you are never brought to the test. All these years to the day, long gone, and yet, we still remember the ache and the frets of the grass growing wet with his blood and his sweat. How could we forget? How could we forget? How could we forget? How can you forget? We all are guilty, for we need to acknowledge our guilt before God. The story does not end here at the foot of the cross. Jesus, who was crucified, is no longer dead. He triumphed over death and was resurrected by the power of God. He is alive. We often get confused with the real meaning of Easter. Store shelves are crammed with Easter eggs, Easter gifts and all. But the real meaning of Easter is much far than this colorful and tasty fun. It's about someone who died to give us life. Jesus Christ is the most central figure in all of human history and Easter is all about his death and resurrection. Some might wonder what all the fuss is about, thinking, who cares? What difference does it make if Jesus rose from the dead? And if he did, where's the evidence? Of course there's much evidence, too much to be discussed tonight. But it makes all the difference in the world. If Christ did not rise, then thousands of believers who have died as martyrs for uh, have died as martyrs for a hoax. If Christ did not rise, then we are still in our sins. And the Apostle Paul says we are to be pitied than all other men. If he did rise, then he is alive and can offer peace to trouble and hurting lives. Here, intellectual assent to the fact that he rose again does little for one's life. It has to be believed and it has to become a part of our life. The day before John Huss, a 15th century martyr, condemned for his faith in Christ, died, he wrote, I write in this, in, in this prison and in chains, expecting tomorrow to receive the sentence of death, full of hope in God that I shall not turn from the truth. Is this hope, peace and joy yours? Can you face death with a smile, with full confidence, that you are going into the presence of Christ? Anyone can have this hope now, if they are willing to trust in Christ and believe that Jesus is who he claimed to be, God who died for our sin. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The major evidence comes through experience in personally receiving Jesus' free gift of forgiveness. He said, I stand at the door and knock, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and commune with him. And Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for us, promised, My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up to the last day. Jesus Christ died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Alpha and Omega it talks about a heavenly father who's who's conquered that who's who's conquered everything he's given us life he's beginning and the end he's the Alpha and Omega so Alpha and Omega
introduction of the cast now. Uh, cast, can you please come on stage, all of you? Go on. Alan John Samuel, the spectators. <laughs> Alan John Samuel, the temple trader. Rohit, the first spectator. Deepak, second spectator. Alina. Spectator and uh, Runal, spectator, Srijan, spectator, Sarah, the mother, Manna, the widow, Susanna, the prophetess, Ludia, and Susanna, ma mistress and servant. Jenny, kitchen woman, please come on stage. <laughs> the angels, noble and seven. I would first of all like to thank Al Almighty God for helping us to do this play. We, it was really uh, something which we didn't think that we'll do this, but in the last minute, God has actually helped us to do this. I really thank God for giving us this opportunity. And the next person we would like to thank is our director, our advisor, everything, Denny Auntie, for helping us so much in this play. <laughs> Auntie, can you come here? And we would like to thank uh, Debbie Auntie for helping us with costumes and Vimla Auntie for helping us with makeup. And we would like to thank one and everyone in our actors for being so patient with us throughout the play and uh, our lights team, our props team, our sounds and special effects and music. Thank you so much for helping us.
and we would like to thank principal's office, AV department, CHTC, chaplaincy department, maintenance department, all the departments for supporting us and giving us what all we need. And we thank uh, Audi Annas for bearing with us, though the practice extended beyond 10 o'clock. And we thank our previous chapel secretaries for guiding us. We also thank everyone who helped us in choosing the play and also everyone who was praying for us. And thank you, special thanks for our backdrops team. It was really good. Thank you so much. Thank you all, all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Hope you had a very good time. Thank you. Can I, I know you want to leave, but actually we have two people who haven't said anything about themselves. They've worked extremely hard, uh, very prayerful. They have been superb to work with. Please, David and Blessy, the two chapel secretaries.